Today we're going to begin learning about kingdom fungi. You probably know at least a little bit about fungus already, um, mushrooms, mold, but that surface stuff is not all there is to know. There's a lot beneath the surface when it comes to fungus, and we tended to have an idea about fungus that's bad, gross, even disgusting, and we don't have a lot of appreciation for it. Well, hopefully after you've learned what there is to know about it beneath the surface, you might have more of an appreciation for it. Let's begin talking about its general characteristics. So first, most fungus is saprophytic heterotrophs. Uh, a couple big words there, so let's just slow down and make sure we remember what those are. So if you are saprophytic, it means that you eat dead organic matter, right? If you are a saprophyte, then your diet consists of organic material that belonged to once living organisms. Ecologically speaking, perhaps you're a decomposer. You are also a heterotroph if you consume the bodies of other organisms for your nourishment. This would be the opposite of an autotroph, which would be like a producer, say a photosynthesizing plant or bacteria that makes its own food. No, if you are a heterotroph, you need to consume something else for food, for energy and nutrition. So a saprophytic heterotroph eats other things that are dead. How very, very nice. Let's move on. Oh, this isn't much better. So you might also be a parasitic heterotroph if you are a fungus. And uh, just for reference, parasitic means that you benefit from another organism at its expense. In other words, a parasite hurts something in order to benefit from it. Uh, parasites for humans would be something like a mosquito that's biting you. It is harming you as it does that, and it benefits from it. So that's what a parasitic relationship is. Okay, so um, the fungi um, do something called extracellular digestion. Uh, cellular, of course, referring to cells, but the extra uh, means outside of. So it digests things outside of its body. So here's how that works. First, kind of like in this picture, um, fungus will grow on its food. It will grow on the food source that it's going to be using to grow. Then it secretes a digestive chemical on it before it's ingested. Now think about this, where are your digestive chemicals? They're in your stomach, right? So you digest things internally. Well, a fungus does the opposite. It digests things externally. So um, not to be too gross or anything, but just imagine you could just barf up your stomach acid onto your food, let it soak for a while until it got nice and jellified and oozy, and then you could just kind of soak it back up. Well, um, I'm not really doing much for the public image of fungus right now, am I? Uh, I'll keep trying, but just, uh, just be patient with me. So, um, the main body of a fungus is called mycelium. Now, when we think about a fungus, we usually think about like the mushrooms growing out of the ground or the uh, fuzzy stuff that's uh, you know, growing on top of your food that's gone bad. That's actually not the main part of the fungus. The main part of the fungus is called mycelium. And that is the part of the fungus that's responsible for the extracellular digestion and also the absorption of the digested food. So um, if you're looking at the mycelium of a fungus, usually what that looks like is a kind of fibrous web. Um, it doesn't look anything like a mushroom or fuzz, it almost looks like a fine system of really thin roots. That's kind of what it looks like. All right, so if uh, the mycelium is the part that does the digestion and not the mushrooms, well then what are the mushrooms for, right? So the fruiting bodies uh, is what you call the part of a fungus that um, actually appears usually above the surface, um, mushrooms are a good example of a fruiting body. So it's called a fruiting body kind of for the same reason that we call the things that plants make fruit. 
It's because fruit contain the seeds that will go on to be the next generation of that organism. Well, the seeds of a fungus are contained in those fruiting bodies, uh, but they are, of course, not seeds because fungi are not plants. They would be spores. Right, so um, we've got a fungus. The main body is called the mycelium. And the mycelium is made of different kinds of cells in the fruiting body. The cells that make up the mycelium are called hypha. And they um, are best described as a filament, which is basically a long string. Okay, So there's a couple different kinds of hypha. And uh, one kind is called septate hypha. So imagine you've got a long string of cells. If you have those cells broken up by their cell walls, okay, it would be like a long hallway of rooms and every room is separated from the next room by a wall. Okay, so that would be a septate hypha. The uh, alternative to that would be um, a non-septate hypha, but in a septate hypha, the, cytop the cytoplasm can pass between cells through pores. So if all of those rooms are separated by walls, then at least they all have doors um, so that cytoplasm can pass through them. So as I said, the alternative is called a non-septate hypha. And in that case, instead of a whole bunch of rooms all in a row, it's just one big long hallway. And kind of like it was one big long cell, the uh, nuclei for um, the kind of have to put air quotes around it when I say all the cells in a non-septate uh, hypha, the nuclei are just spread out and they all share the same cytoplasm. Okay, so just to review there, we've got a fungus whose main body is called mycelium, um, who produce uh, fruiting bodies that uh, contain their spores for reproduction. The mycelium, the main body, is made of long filaments of cells that are called hypha, and those hypha may either be septate or non-septate. If they are septate, then all the cells are separated by cell walls, and if they are non-septate, then they are joined together like one big, long hallway. So there are a couple other kinds of hypha, other distinctions. One kind, uh, it's called a rhizoid hypha. That would be a hypha that is embedded in the material on which the fungus grows. So say if you were looking at like a, a rotting branch in the woods and there's, you know, like some shelf fungus growing outside on the bark. If you peel open the bark and you see those like kind of thin wispy strands, those would be hypha uh, that are embedded in the wood that is being decomposed by that fungus. Uh, those would be rhizoid hypha. Uh, they are, of course, part of the mycelium because the mycelium is made of hypha. And the other kind of hypha that are not rhizoid are called aerial hypha. Okay, these are um, not embedded in the material upon which the fungus grows. So you can think of aerial kind of like being up in the air, right? Uh, so these hypha would not be rooted. I don't want to use the word root as in roots because plants have roots. Uh, fungi do not have roots. Uh, their entire, entire body, the mycelium, looks like roots okay it's not that they are anchored into its food source they reach up into the air okay so aerial hypha have a couple different functions uh one thing that they can do is absorb oxygen from the air you know everything that respirates needs oxygen and uh fungi are no different they also can produce spores uh, depending on what kind of fungus we're talking about specifically um, the aerial hypha are also able to produce spores. Um, if, a, if an aerial hypha produces spores, it's called a sporophore. Right, so they can also reproduce to form new filaments. Uh, one of the ways that fungi grow is by extending their mycelia. Um, if that is the particular purpose of this aerial hypha, then it is called a stolon. And last of all, a hostorium. Um, that is a hypha of a parasitic fungus. Remember, that's one that benefits from another organism at its expense that enters the host's cells and it absorbs nutrition directly 
from the cytoplasm. So you can think of it almost like how a mosquito can stick its mouth, you know, it's like kind of needle mouth into your blood vessels and take blood out for its nourishment. This would be a kind of filament of cells, a hypha, that can um, enter into a host cell and just kind of suck the nutrition out of it. Okay, so uh, that is the structure, uh, the general structure of fungi. Uh, later on, we'll talk about particular kinds of fungi and how they interact with other organisms. But for now, that's just your introduction to the kingdom of fungi. And uh, if you don't appreciate them yet, um, maybe I'll get you next time.